it's like sustainability, it could be used in in, uh, in many different ways, and, and, and we, we have to be careful what, what we are talking about. I think urban metabolism is, in a way, it's more a metaphor than a concept. Okay. Because okay. I think that it tends to um, assume that the city is a kind of coherent, uh, bounded mm -hmm. um, entity. Mm -hmm. And, and there is, of course, this analogy towards um, the, the human body um, and thinking about the city in terms of different organs mm -hmm. and the interaction between different organs. My understanding of uh, metabolism is essentially looking at the way the city operates uh, and looking at where we can combine waste streams and where we can integrate various processes better mm -hmm. to bring yeah. about more efficiency, yeah. either economic or environmental. Yeah. Uh, okay. The other feature which is very significant, um, which has become very significant recently, is the notion about uh, uh, the growth of cities uh, using in analogy to the growth of um, species of various sorts or, or indeed the growth of uh, animals, right? In particular, um, uh, in particular the, um, uh, there is this area of um, work in um, biology and ecology really called allometry. And allometry is, is, is the investigation of how the shapes of a living object change with respect to growth. Uh, and it's not only growth in terms of the individual animal or species, but also growth between species. So, for example, um, a mouse, for example, um, is very small. It has a very high metabolic rate. It uses energy, um, the amount of energy is a much greater rate than we do, for example. And that's to do with its mass. And um, it lives a lot less than us. And that begs the question, um, so an elephant will evolve much more slowly than a mouse, because simply because you in, in animals you reproduce when you die. So cities, if you look at the city, um, is, is London an elephant or a mouse? Uh, is it an elephant? I don't think it is an elephant. I actually think it's a collection of mice. You no, know, uh, you know, cities are machinic, and that kind of, like, is a kind of, a, you know, organic mixing together of stuff, which forms, you know, a, a functioning entity. Okay. Um, it is an, an analogous with uh, the um, human metabolism in, in the sense that it's about. M maintaining some kind of um, equilibrium through a process of circulation. It was basically about resource flows into and out of the city that went through various processes to create the inputs and outputs of those processes essentially. So, um, and what's in my field, what you're striving for continually is to make sure that those things join up. So essentially, as far as possible, the outputs become the inputs. So the it's circular, so we're always trying to see if you can close the loop. And my work is about infrastructure in cities. Mm -hmm. So there's this, just intrinsically, it's so in, in related because infrastructure, so the growth in networked infrastructure is what's enabled people to grow in their consumption levels. Um, and infrastructure needs to be, if it were good infrastructure, supposedly should be cheap, mm -hmm. fast, reliable, mm -hmm. um, and really good at bringing people instantly what they want and what they need. Mm -hmm. And so now there's this point at which we've come where we realize we've become so good at doing that, getting the resources from all over the world through these infrastructure networks that we're going, whoa, well, and we're trying to um, f figure out different ways by which you can use those networks mm -hmm. by reducing the level of consumption or slowing the rate of increase. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it comes into my work because it's about making more efficient infrastructure or changing how it's configured, so trying to loop the resource okay. loops, yes. and, and that is actually the kind of structure I'm looking at. I'm sure that, like all metaphors, mm -hmm. uh, its use uh, is limited, yes. and you can push it too far. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, clearly, uh, there's no way in which um, an urban area really is like an animal that has a digestive system. Mm -hmm. um, it, it consists of animals that have digestive systems, but it itself is not an animal. Yeah. And one thing that really bothers me, Newman did address this a bit, is that it's like water going in, 
energy, food, output, sewage, heat, pollution, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more than that. It's like, you need to look at the other things going on. Because like, it's fundamentally cities are about people. They're not just totally apart from the people. It's the people going on. If you've got a civil war in a country, it's going to make a massive difference to the urban metabolism than if you haven't got it going on. And it's the people that make the civil war happen. Mm -hmm. Not anything else. I mean, you know, cities uh, are not living organisms. Mm -hmm. um, cities are products yes. uh, constructed by living organisms. Um, and obviously, uh, it's not organic in the sense that um, it's uh, not governed by laws of biology and all that kind of thing. It's governed by social, economic, political institutions mm -hmm. and a very wide range of issues. But the physical basis, nevertheless, is important. Mm -hmm. People working in energy in cities have begun to think about it in terms of how energy relates to bigger issues to do with human behaviour, mm -hmm. rates of change, location, things of that sort. So, so it's beginning in that sense. One can talk about the energy consumption and the resource, more generally resource use and waste production of the city um, as a set of systems and that's a very reasonable thing to do. Um, but. You know, the question I ask of the metabolists, or those who talk about urban metabolism, is what is the equivalent of the Krebs cycle? There is a kind of urban system in which n nature um, plays a part, even if we think it doesn't. You know, so 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 there is still the uh, there, there is still the, uh, the the element of nature is 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 uh, asserting itself. There's a possibility, in a way, to get an, a misleading impression of what the city is and the relationship, if you like, between um, the city and urbanisation um, as a much broader set of processes, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Henri Lefebvre's distinction. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, in other words, I think urban metabolism is a kind of a, a useful starting point. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a provocative starting mm -hmm. point. Yes. But I don't, I don't think it's a very coherent concept mm -hmm. in itself. I think it's important to us because it acts as a very useful balance to the way that um, people currently think about the economy. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, the physical basis of the economy tends to be quite invisible when mm -hmm. you talk about it. Yes. If you listen to economists talking, mm -hmm. even when they're talking about um, resources and environmental matters, you would often not know that they were actually talking of something that mm -hmm. had mass yeah. and had a physical basis. Yeah. It's, it's not discipline specific, so there are a lot of people, you can talk to people from a lot of different disciplines, and when you talk about urban metabolism, it's, it's a metaphor, it's a, an image that people can relate to. Infrastructure means something to engineers, but it sounds maybe dull to my mom. Mm. But if I talk about that organism, mm. and just how all I'm trying to do is help construct something that helps you loop. It's very powerful. Yeah. If you had an interdisciplinary team yeah. of people, anthropolog anthropologists, political scientists, all of these, you could really start to understand the dynamics and what makes things happen. It's been useful for me because of the ways in which it starts, say, it, it starts allowing you to challenge um, the idea of how we understand what what, what a social science narrative of a city is. So metabolism makes you start thinking about things like you know food. Yes. You know, it makes you start thinking about waste. Mm -hmm. it makes you start thinking about things like um, you know energy input, energy output. Mm -hmm. You can apply these ideas of urban metabolism, mm -hmm. and they're often done at a localized level, mm -hmm. and it's the lack of replication of these ideas. Mm -hmm. And the question is, why don't they get replicated? In actually modelling, it's difficult to model systems that are replicable mm -hmm. because of the local context. Yeah. I think it's a useful concept for that. I don't think, at this stage, it's particularly useful for another country. I know, I mean, it's mainly seen a bit like a carbon footprint indicator, isn't it? Sort of, mm -hmm. So you can measure what's going into your city, and then if you do some measurements, maybe you can reduce what's going in and what's going out, or at least what's going out or something, you know, mm. and you can do these year on year measurements and see how your city's performance. So it's a bit like a performance indicator. But um, the difference between human bodies or animal bodies and cities mm -hmm. 
is that um, animal bodies, by and large, are similar one to the next. Mm -hmm. So the, all humans, morphologically, mm -hmm. are very much the same as each other. They go wrong in different ways, and so you know the study of pathologies of illnesses and abnormalities, um, which is what physiologists often study, um, are looking at the same object that goes wrong in different ways. You take cities; every city is different. Yes, you don't get two cities which are precisely the same as each other. Even if you had two cities which were, you know, the same ideal city plan built in two different locations, they're in different locations, and so at some scale, you know, at the regional scale, they're morphologically different to each other. That means that it's a different kind of science. Okay. So the science requires a description of the individual city in such a way that you can compare two morphologically different entities. Insofar as anything has been done, it's been done at the level of hardware in the sense of looking at flows of energy between, say for example, industries, etc. Not much has been done to connect energy to human behavior and certainly very little to connect energy to um, uh, the location of land uses and the design of transport systems and so on. To some extent the urban system operates like that, but it is also a highly, heavily alienated system and we, we should not act as though that contradiction had been resolved, because it hasn't been resolved, you see, you see I, I, think, I think the, the um, metabolism of the capitalist political economy is fundamentally con con contradictory to, to nature and to the long-term survival of humanity, and, and that is what dominates the urban system. The, the capitalist political economy is a metabolism because there, there is circulation of things, it, it does work, it's been in existence for um, half a millennium mm. and it, it, it is uh, resilient but it's also leading us to disaster and um, because of certain feedback loops within it and, and all of this kind of stuff <clears throat> which we could go into. Um, so it is a metabolism, but it is also uh, an unnatural and wrong metabolism, and therefore, so, so we have to use, we we have to approach the urban metabolism with an element of hostility as well as uh, em em embrace, if you like, you know. So if you're looking at a kind of metaphor, I do still like the glacier metaphor of sort of these big glacier sort of retreats and extensions, and these rub and, and crush, and it's in those rubbings and crushings that things get formed and landscapes get formed which we're operating rather than the idea of some endlessly sort of plugged in networks and flows and liquids. So yeah, I'm a much more sort of rocky person. <laughs> <laughs> How exactly the city can be sustained or protected. Okay. And then you, you link with these discourses that tend to see um, uh, challenges to the way in which the city is organised mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a kind of a systemic threat of some kind. Yes. So you have certain kinds of urban histories like Peter Ackroyd where in a sense he he describes London as being resilient from what he sees as the mob, which in fact can be political demonstrations or people with different perspectives on the city. So mm -hmm. I think urban metabolism can tend to um, reinforce mm -hmm. um, pre-existing ways of understanding how space is organised, potentially. Okay. Okay. I think it doesn't easily lead to new ways of thinking about the organisation of the city. But there are some elements of, of informal set of settlements that I think we have something to learn from. Yes. And this idea that they're adaptable, that they're more planned by people, um, and they're more efficient, I quite liked that, and I thought that maybe there's something to learn from that, and maybe the metabolism model could be interesting to analyse it, to look at what's going into yeah. these settlements, look at the processes, but also particularly things like kinship networks, and, and so... We have to maintain that sense of duality, and, and continue to... Um, vision the, the kind of development we would like to have and the longer term metabolism we would like to have.